Hi friends, Will Davis Jr. with Good News Today. I hope you are doing well. Thanks for joining in. We got two more. Got today and tomorrow. I'll be back the Tuesday after Labor Day, which I think is September 7th. I'll confirm that tomorrow. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. It's been such a fun run. Thanks for sticking with me. We're ending with a bang. So uh, here's verse 7 of Genesis chapter 2. Let me put on my glasses so I don't butcher the text here. Then the Lord God formed the, the man of dust from the ground. The man, you could say the man of dust or the man of dust from the ground. It works either way because both are true. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. So tomorrow in our conclusionary uh, good news today for the season, we're going to deal with breath of life and living creature and the beauty of all that. Let's talk about this, these first couple of phrases, though, in verse 7. The Lord God. There's the second time that phrase appears in this creation account. And remember, it's, it's Yahweh Elohim. Elohim is the anchor. anchor. The anchor term is the first, the same word used 35 times in the first creation account. And it's the, 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 the overall most 2,700 times in Scripture most frequently used for term for God in the Bible. And it's the God as pictured in Genesis 1 of creation. Yahweh, the first name attached now to the anchor name, is the covenant, relational, redemptive name of God. And you've got both involved in making Adam. The, 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 we, the text slows down and gets much more focused now on God's relationship with humans in the second creation account or the subsequent creation account. So God's not just making anything. You know, he's making relationship. And so we add that name Yahweh because it's very relational. So the Lord God formed. Mark the word formed. It's the word used most frequently of a potter working with clay. Throughout the Bible, it's used there. It speaks of God forming the nation of Israel. It speaks of God forming the fish of the sea in Job. It's very much a creative term. And it implies a very specific work. Uh, it, impl it implies thought. It implies intentionality. Okay? Hang on. The Lord God uh, formed the man, the specific the man, from the dust of the earth. You could say the man of dust from the earth because we come from dust. Okay? But there's a play on words here. The word man is Adam, in English, A D A M. The word earth is Adama, A D A D A M A H. We are, we are man of the earth. In literal sense, we're man of dust from the earth. And so it, there's a very tight connection. And by the word Adam, Adam, is the generic word for mankind in Scripture. So it's true that God made Adam the man. He also made Adam all of humanity from Adam. So it's very clear that we take our, our orientation from the essence of the planet and the earth. Um, notice that this is the first time God has used ingredients in making something. I love this. In, in all of the first creation account, God spoke. His ingredient was the Word of God. God spoke. God said, let there be, and there was. Over and over, let us make man our image. Over and over again, God spoke. In this subsequent creation account, we now have God actually taking the basic substance of the earth, dust, which and all the nutrients and particles and atoms and molecules, it's, it's in there. And using that to form Adam, Adam, mankind. Okay, we are, and Genesis 3.19 says, you came from dust because of death and sin, back to dust you go. Okay, my phone's ringing. So, it was such a great song too. Anyway, um, remember the, the ingredient for woman is not dust. The ingredient for woman is a rib. So really, ladies are the, the, the crowning and final work of creation, not from dust, but from the side of a man, is the woman made. And ladies, you can also amen to that because you are clearly the best thing that God ever did. Okay, some applications and implications of this. Um, we have a relational, creative God who has made us. We are not in any way accidental or random. This passage once again with no mistaking it, refutes evolution. And I say this without apology. The more I study Genesis, the more I'm, that, that we are formed and created, that there is intention and design behind us. You can say it two ways. You could say that, that the scriptures are supporting here what science has understood, that there's intentionality behind humans. You could also say that science fully supports what the scriptures teach. Both are true. That the evidence is overwhelming that man is, is clearly intentional 
and designed. And there's nothing random or accidental about us. There's too much miraculous in us to have been formed from our human, um, excuse me, our animal compadres here on the planet. We're designed. And we're designed with important ingredients because there's something very important about us. Um, but I also want you to note just a, the bit of the humility of humans in reading this text because it, without God doing this work in us, we wouldn't exist. Without God forming humans, and then as we see tomorrow, breathing into humans' life, we would never exist. John Calvin, the great reformer, wrote of this passage, anyone who reads Genesis 2, 7, and walks away arrogant, like, hey, look at us, is stupid. <laughs> because our entire dependency is on the creative and breathing work of God. We're special. We're going to see that tomorrow. We're also completely dependent on the work of the Father. To be continued. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thanks to my friends. Thanks for teaching us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more. See you tomorrow.